The engines on the island of Sodor look forward to Halloween. They enjoy the fireworks and the children dressing up as wizards and witches. They also love Edward's spooky stories. So we all know the scrapyard at Kildane is run by those two diesels, Ari and Bert. The engines chuckled. Normally, the mention of the two scrap diesels would make the engines nervous, but they were currently away being mended at the works. This meant the engines could celebrate Halloween in peace. But I'm sure you didn't know that the Kildane scrapyard was once run by a steam engine when it first opened. The engines were surprised, but encouraged Edward to continue, and this was the story he told. Long ago, when the Sodor Ironworks was formed, it had its own dedicated engine. This engine would prove to look like Donald and Douglas, but this engine was not a Caledonian. This engine was a Johnson 3F with a Fowler tender. The only reason some would think this was her round cab windows. In all honesty, this engine had gained her cab from a scrapped engine, and she had it refitted to herself. This engine had no official name, but many engines just referred to her as Stella. Stella was a hard worker, always shunting trucks filled with slag that floated to the top of the molten iron, or shunting trucks to a place in the smelting shed called The Edge. It was so named as it was elevated above the furnaces to allow the scrap to be simply dumped out at the ends of the trucks. This was done so trucks could be unloaded quickly from truck to the furnace and for the company to save money. Stella knew the dangers of being too close to the edge, as the men joked that anything that went in melted into a puddle. One Halloween, Stella was bringing in a trainload of scrap to be melted down into new rails. She was passing by some low-hanging chains and one caught on her whistle, knocking it off. She was so busy, she didn't notice as she brought her train to the edge to prepare for shunting. Her driver found something else had happened. Your brakes are jammed, Stella. You're not going anywhere, he said. How oh, bother, huffed Stella. What about that ship and I need to shunt together? Well, guess the engine will need to pick it up them shelves, said her driver. Anyway, it's light and our shift is ended. We'll tell the foreman to have the workmen see about repairing your brakes. Stella was cross, but she could do nothing about it. Her driver and fireman damped down her fire, they explained to the foreman. The mechanic for the night shift is out sick. Cell will have to be repaired in the morning. Soon, the ironworks had gone quiet, save for the roar of the furnaces as skeleton crew of workers worked the night shift. Later that night, another engine came to collect his train of flatbeds filled with rails. The engine was big and green, and had come from the other railway. He grumbled dreadfully as he puffed into the steelwork. Where is my train? He roared. Sorry, our designated engine has broken down. You'll need to collect your trucks on your own, said the night foreman. The engine snorted angrily and puffed away to shunt his train. Soon the brake van had got his long line of heavy rails. But before leaving, they needed a brake van. They looked around and saw a brake van at the end of the long train that went around a bend. No one could see what was at the other end of the train. <sighs> Come on, old boy, let's couple up and we can be off, said the engine's driver. The engine seethed indigently as he dragged his heavy train to the next line. He banged into the brake van hard. Unfortunately, the train the brake van was on was Stella's scrap train. Stella woke with a start as she was violently shunted forwards and toward the edge. Stop! Stop! I'm back here! But no one heard her. Stella tried to whistle a warning, but nothing came out. She realized her whistle was gone. Suddenly, her front wheels left the track and she was pushed over the edge. Just before she was about to plunge over, the train finally stopped. The weight of the heavy scrap trucks kept her stationary. Help! Please! Help! Pull me back! But the engine didn't hear her. He was too far away and lost in his thoughts. The brake van was uncoupled from the trucks and the train set off. Stella stared down into the hot, boiling furnace below her. She could feel herself swaying back and forth, her balance hanging in a precarious balance. 
Suddenly, she became aware of a growing pain just under her cap. The pin holding her tender to her was beginning to break. Oh no! Oh no! She whimpered. Then, with a sharp crack, the pin gave way, and Stella tumbled front over end into the furnace, screaming. The only thing the few workers did finally hear over the roar of the furnace was the massive explosion as Stella's boiler exploded as the water inside flashed to steam. Molten metal was everywhere. Of Stella, the only trace left of her was her slightly melted tender that was now fused with the tracks of the cooling glob of molten metal. And they say on Halloween, Stella's ghost returns to the smelters looking for her lost whistle. Edward finished before giving two loud toots on his whistle. Ooh, ah, oh, spooky! Oh, the, the engines cried, oh, all shivering a little. Just then, a familiar blue car pulled up. It was Sir Topham Hatt. Good evening, engines. Getting the night started with some scary tales, I see. He then turned to Thomas, Percy, and Duck. I have a special job for you. You are to collect some scrap from the smelter's yard tonight for slow goods to the mainland in the morning. On Halloween? Squeaked Percy. Don't worry, Percy. You'll be back in time for the fireworks. Sir Topham Hatt said before turning and leaving. <laughs> Percy isn't afraid of missing the fireworks. He's a scaredy engine. Thomas chuckled. I am not. Snapped Percy. Come on, you two. No arguing. Duck said. We have a job and we should do it the- If you say Great Western Way again, Duck, Gordon interrupted, grumbling, then you could sleep on the Little Western tonight. The three engines puffed away. At the smelters, all Percy could think about was Stella the ghost engine. Thomas knew Percy was scared, so he kept on teasing Percy. Oh, hello, Percy. How are you? Oh, what's that up there? Is it a spook? Thomas squeaked. It's just a piece of twisted scrap, said Percy. Isn't it? <laughs> you can never be too sure. Careful the ghost engine doesn't get you, <laughs> Thomas said spookily as he puffed away. There's no such thing as ghosts, snapped Percy. Duck looked over at the little green engine sympathetically. No one is brave all the time. But I am not a scary engine. Later, most of the work was done, but there was still one more job to do. The manager spoke to the engines. Well done, you three. Now I just need one engine to finish up for tomorrow. Ari and Bert should be back to work then, and I don't want to hear them grumbling about extra work. Duck looked at Percy and winked. He was going to pay Thomas back for his teasing. Please, sir. Oh, I'm sure Thomas wouldn't mind. He said. Of course not, Thomas boasted. I'm not a scaredy engine. You'd know all about that, wouldn't you, Percy, eh? And with that, Duck and Percy left with their trains of scrap, and the manager left for his office. Once Thomas was alone, every sound and shadow was spooky. He was beginning to feel very scared. Well, there's no such thing as ghosts. There's, a, there's no such thing. He said, nervously. Suddenly, there was a quiet hiss, like the hiss from a steam engine cylinders. Well, who's there? Thomas whimpered. There was no reply. Thomas's crew then returned from the station office. Come on, Thomas, let's get a start on shunting, said his driver. Thomas glanced nervously around as he backed down to start shunting. As he puffed toward the back of the smelting shed, he thought he saw a rusty tender sitting in the shadows. Thomas wasn't sure, but the tender looked... melted. Or so he thought as the flickering sparks lit the shed up. As Thomas backed down into a disused part of the smelting shed to turn back around to begin shunting, he looked all around for ghosts. He was so busy doing this, he didn't watch where he was going. Chains hanging from the cranes felt like ghost fingers as they scratched against his calf. Oh! Hey! Something's got me! No, 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 get off! Go away! Go on! He came to a stop in the sighting. As his fireman stepped down to set the points so the little blue tank engine could head back home, Thomas wheezed steam loudly. Suddenly, 
and an old steam whistle sounded out. The, the, the ghost whistle! cried Thomas. He was so scared, the moment his driver opened the regulator, Thomas raced away as fast as his wheels could carry him. His driver thought it was just a shift change whistle. Whoa, Thomas, slow down! We still have shunting to do! Thomas didn't care. The ghost engine is after me! He cried. At Wellsworth, Duck and Percy had dropped their scrap trucks off at the yards. They were waiting for Thomas to join them. I'm sure Thomas is feeling spooked now. It was naughty of him to tease you that way, Percy. Duck chuckled. Oh, he was just playing, said Percy. He had relaxed and now didn't feel as scared as he had before. After all, I think he's just getting back at me for scaring him with that cart of lime. I do hope he's not too much later. I wouldn't want him to miss the fireworks. Just then, Thomas wished by the two engines. Clear the way, clear the way! He's after me! I don't think he'll be late. Chortle Duck. Duck and Percy joined the other engines at Knapford to enjoy the bonfire and fireworks. Percy looked around and noticed that Thomas was nowhere to be seen. Where's Thomas? You'll miss all the fun! Well, it would serve him right for all his teasing. Engines shouldn't act that way. It's not the Great West- That's it. Gordon grunted from nearby. You can sleep on the Little Weston tonight, Duck. As Duck and Gordon began to bicker, Percy puffed away to find Thomas. No one noticed Edward slink away either, back towards Kildane. Percy found Thomas all alone at the sheds. Are you alright, Thomas? He asked. Yeah, said Thomas, shakily. Uh, I'm sorry I teased you, Percy. Duck was right. Nobody's brave all the time. Percy smiled. At least we know when to say we're sorry sometimes, he said. Now come on, Thomas. We can see the fireworks just fine from here. The two friends puffed out of the sheds and sat on the turntable, enjoying the fireworks. Meanwhile, Edward puffed into the smelter's shed. He had a feeling some shunting was needed. But as he puffed along, he saw all the tracks in line, ready for work the next morning. He puffed into the disused part of the sheds and stopped. Hmm, seems we don't have to do any work after all, said his driver. Uh, driver? Could you give me a moment? Uh, sure, old boy. Come on, Sid. Let's get some coffee while we're here. Once Edward's crew had left, he looked around. Besides the fizzing sparks and the sounds of the smelter shed, everything was quiet. I know you're here, he said quietly. For a while, nothing happened until an engine quietly puffed up from around a pile of scrap. Playing tricks again? Edward asked. The engine gave a cheeky hiss of steam. I'm surprised that you're still here. I would have thought you'd have moved on after the steelworks spot those two diesels. The engine hissed again, this time with less approval. I know you worked here, but you shouldn't linger. Your unfortunate and horrible accident was in the past, and the work can be handled now that there are engines working here all the time. You don't need to stay. The engine hissed again. Argue all you want, but this place can manage alone. Or is there another reason you are here? The engine hissed again, more sheepishly. Edward looked back and saw the rusty tender sitting quiet and forgotten. You know a tender really isn't a part of us, right? Even if we feel our couplings, Tenders can be swapped out for completely new ones. They are an extension, but not fully a part of our being. The engine growled a little. You can deny it all you want, but given how forgotten this line is, I have a feeling you'll be waiting here a long time still before you're reunited with your tender. How much longer are you going to wait? Until it turns to dust? The engine gave a hiss that sounded unsure. 
Well, you'll have all the time in the world then to figure that out. You were always a little stubborn. The engine gave a hiss that sounded almost like an airy giggle. Then it began to puff away. I hope you'll keep the cheeky jokes in the meantime. Not every engine is ready to understand how complicated life and death is. The puffing faded away into the sounds of the smelters. Edward looked up into the dark shadows for a moment longer before his crew returned and he puffed back to the sheds. He wasn't sure if the spirit would behave or if anything it could do would be noticed by Ari or Bert. But at the same time, he didn't need to know. He had a feeling sooner or later Stella would see sense and move on at last. She always did in the end.